Um, hello, Nicola. Uh, welcome to Swiss Map. Uh, perhaps could you tell us a little bit about yourself and your research line, and maybe also share with us your ideas and visions for Swiss Map? Okay, so well, let me start with uh, um, my research. I mean, that's the most fascinating. Uh, and it all goes around uh, randomness. Um, this concept of randomness really ranges from philosophy to technology and from physics to mathematics and even extends to uh, biology, for instance. So in mathematics, uh, randomness is defined, for instance, a series of bits is said to be random if the, its Kolmogorov uh, complexity is maximum, so you cannot compress it. And I think that's a very nice and intuitive uh, concept. Uh, however, it assumes that the entire infinite series of bits is all given at once. And um, consequently, for finite uh, sequence, it is not practical. Any finite sequence cannot be proven to be random. Now, in physics, we approach this concept of randomness in a very different way. We do not consider a series of bits for the process, like, for instance, the measuring process uh, in physics, measuring some uh, physical systems. And here, under some plausible, highly plausible assumptions, one can really prove the existence of uh, truly random processes. So there are two uh, assumptions. One is that there is no instantaneous communication at a distance. And the second one that there is no conspiracy in the sense that they exist independent variables. And with these two uh, mild, very mild assumptions, one can indeed prove that any violation of a Bell inequality um, implies, really in the mathematical sense, that the outcomes of the measurements are random in the sense of containing some entropy. So now in standard Bell inequality scenarios, you have two parties that we always name Alice and Bob, and each party actually receives some inputs, some measurement settings, as we say. And these are also assumed to be random. So there's a kind of, yeah, you have to put randomness in to get randomness out. So you can prove only randomness amplification. You get more out than what we put in. And one of the important goals of my research is to look at scenarios where we don't need any inputs. For instance, in the triangle, uh, with three parties on the edges of that uh, triangle, um, there are, there is a great hope uh, that one could prove that the outcomes are random, although there is no input at all. And I find that uh, super exciting. Now, if we move on to technology, um, our information-based society needs randomness for many uh, security applications. Um, and actually, I can only tell you that before the end of this uh, year, I trust that there will be smartphones that include a quantum random number generator. So I will have some quantum random number generator in my pocket and hopefully you soon too. Um, I find that also very exciting. Um, but of course, these uh, quantum random number generator chips do not really violate the Bell inequality. Uh, they are we need additional assumptions. And uh, a second uh, fascinating research program is to optimize with that, these additional assumptions. So if we now turn to, uh, to philosophy, uh, let's consider even classical physics, a chaotic classical dynamical systems. These are said to be deterministic, uh, however, this is only true if we assume that the initial condition is really given by a real number. And typical real number have infinite information. You have again a series of bits or digits which extends forever and has no structure. Now, if we limit uh, physical relevance to uh, finite information numbers, then even classical physics is indeterministic and leads to uh, random processes. And so here we see that there is a, a connection with this infinite series of bits where mathematics has a good definition of randomness. 
and here for typical uh, real numbers. Uh, and somehow standard mathematics assumes that all these objects, these mathematical objects, they exist in some platonistic world and are all given at once, somehow from outside time. Um, and very interestingly, in my opinion, and in strong contrast with these classical or platonistic mathematics, there exists a branch of mathematics called intuitionistic mathematics that assumes that the continuum is made out of numbers that are themselves processes that develop in time. And this may lead to a better description of indeterminism in physics. And that's actually the second main goal of my research. Yeah, so may maybe one question about it. Uh, so would you see some potential for collaboration with other SwissMap teams, maybe some mass teams on this second topic? Yes, so collaborations. There are already collaborations. There is the obvious collaboration, of course, with my Geneva colleague, uh, Nicolas Brunner. Uh, we work very closely together. Uh, there is also already some ongoing uh, collaborations with uh, Professor Renato Renner at the ETH. Um, but certainly, and especially maybe about this intuitionistic mathematics, uh, I, would be, I would very welcome collaboration with uh, mathematicians who probably have a, a better knowledge about this sort of mathematics, or constructive mathematics, than I have. So uh, I'm certainly looking forward to a Swiss map to, uh, to gain insight and to uh, share experience and uh, friendship with colleagues.